welcome to another episode of The Healing Heart with Dr. NJ. As you know, we are here to solve your problems. We are here to discuss the issues that you are having, those burning issues that you're having in your relationship that are often confusing to you and you don't know how to deal with them. Dr. NJ is here to help you tackle those issues, solve those issues, and get you into a happy place in your relationship. We heal hearts here. Dr. NJ, we have so many questions um, for you today, and we have some tips that we'll be giving you to spark up that relationship um, you know, that you have, and um, we will be right back after this break. Maggi? No, crayfish and palm oil. There is high demand for these products. We sell it at wholesale price, so you can resell to make more money. Sunny Uso and Company. We have been in business for a while now, and our customers have been so wonderful. Need any of these products? Maggi? No, crayfish and palm oil. We have it all at wholesale price. Call 713-922-2968. Or come to 9898 Business Street, Suits 430N, Houston, Texas, 77036. Or email us at sunnyibrahim2000 at yahoo.com. Call us to cater for your guests. We are also number one in catering services only for other and events. Oil services. Ask us now or go to www.psgoilservices.com. Maggie? No, crayfish and palm oil. We have it all. Sunny Uso and Company. We go miles to put smiles on your face. Okay, we're back. All right. So let's deal with um, one or two questions. And then, like I promised you, I have some tips for you that will help to spark up your relationship. So here we go with question number one. My girlfriend and I live with her 17-year-old, very naughty girl. She constantly likes to provoke me. She keeps saying she hates me and will put me in trouble. She's a real devil. She masturbates in front of me when her mother is not looking. What should I do? My name is Peter and I need help. Oh my God, Peter, you do need help. That's for sure. You definitely need help. A 17-year-old, and why does the mother leave um, her alone with you? I mean, you know, um, does her mother know she's this naughty? Have you told her? Because you really need to tell her what's going on. Because otherwise, if something happens and she pins it on you, it's going to be her word against yours. And guess what? Nobody's likely to believe you. Okay, so um, what is this about she keeps, she says she hates you, she'll put you in trouble, and she masturbates in front of you? What, what does that mean? Are, are you in her bedroom? What, what do you mean? Does she leave her door open? Does she, like, call you to come and watch her? And you do? Are you getting a kick out of this little girl? You're going to be in trouble, Peter. Okay, so what's my advice to you? One, and the best advice, run for your life. Peter, run for your life. I'm going to say it again. Run for your life, Peter. Okay, so um, are you documenting what is going on? Are you talking to her mother? Are you telling someone about this 17-year-old? Who are you speaking to? All right? Are you also indulging her behavior? You don't need to do any of that, okay? You don't need to indulge her behavior. You need to let her mama know what she's doing. Let her mama know what day she did what, okay? And uh, make sure that you're not alone with her in the house, all right? Are you working? If her mom is at work, I'm assuming that you also working, or are you not working? Is she out of school? Or, or when, when are these things happening? Peter, run. All right? You need to just go. Okay. Um, let's talk about this uh, from, this is from someone else named Johnson. Johnson says, I've been married for 20 years with my wife, and we have three kids. 
The middle child looks nothing like me. He is seven years old and he's also very sickly. I found out he's a type O and I'm a type A. Johnson is talking about the blood genotype here. And he says, what am I going to do? I love my wife. I love all my children, but this seven-year-old is just not like me. His mannerisms are different, and um, we just don't get along. From day one, when he was born, I knew he wasn't mine. Johnson. Ah, Johnson. I mean, there are four things that come to my mind when I get letters like this, you know, when couples bring these sorts of things, um, you know, to bear. Uh, one is deception. The other is forgiveness. Then there is love. And then there is healing. What am I talking about? What I'm saying, Johnson, is let's put all that's happening in your life right now in a bottle. You believe there's deception going on. You believe your wife has deceived you and that one of those fine children are not yours. So you are coming up with all kinds of stuff in your mind and already you are playing the um, advocate, you know, and um, you just want out. But guess what, Johnson? There are two other kids that are involved here. And there's a 20 year old relationship that's also involved. So this one child is bothering you and you are feeling terrible because you believe that you have been deceived. But Johnson, you have no proof because you haven't sought the truth. Where are you gonna find the truth? First of all, you need to do a DNA test. Second of all, you need to be talking to your wife. You need to be communicating. You need to be speaking to a counselor, number three. Okay? You need a third party. You need to pour out your heart about this matter to a third party and to your wife. And let's find common ground. Can this be true? Is it because this child is sickly that he doesn't have your mannerisms? Is it a health issue that he's having? Okay? I mean, you have two other children. There's a 20-year relationship. You say you love your wife and all of that. So let's just assume that that child is not yours, biologically yours. But he has been living with all of you for seven years of his life. And he was born by the woman that also bore the other children for you. Why would you single this one out? And why would you not treat him like your child, biological or not? Do you see what I'm saying, Johnson? And then I also said to you, there is something else that I'm seeing here. Another word that I want you to you know, um, bear in mind is forgiveness. Forgiveness is that ability to know that something is not quite what it's supposed to be, but you are willing to go past the hurt, the feeling, you know, the, the whatever that was, and give this person a chance by saying, you know what, it's okay. I'm only assuming that the child is not yours. We don't know for sure until you have a DNA test done, okay? But you need to start learning how to forgive your wife. If indeed that child is not yours, what was the circumstance? How did that happen? When did it happen? Okay, seven years ago. How? It's possible that child is yours. It's also possible, you know, that the child is not, depending on what was going on in your relationship. That 20-year-old relationship, was it sore at any time? Okay, maybe in the 13th year, was something going on? Did you have a separation? See, you haven't told us everything, Johnson. See, that, that's the thing. 
because you haven't said all that has happened in the relationship, I, I really can't judge that matter. But I want to leave you with that word, forgiveness. Okay? And then we're talking about love. Love sums everything up. Love is that feeling, okay, that you have in your heart that everything will be okay. It allows you to see things from very different perspectives, and it allows you to give of yourself, of your time, okay? Show this little boy love. You don't need to look at him and feel, oh, he's not mine. You don't need to look at him and say, oh, she deceived me. You don't need to hate him. He's your child, biologically or not. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Johnson? And then, lastly, I want to leave you with this word, healing. What am I talking about here? If indeed there was deception... If it's confirmed that there was deception, I want you to bring up that forgiveness spirit that we just talked about. Forgive her, okay? How do you do that? You pull out the love that's in your heart, the purity, the kindness that's in you. You love her. You forgive her. And then you begin to heal. Okay? Remember one thing. That child did not ask to be born, either by you or by somebody else, but that child was born into your household. Johnson, you are the head of household. There are two other kids involved. And as far as those two other kids are concerned, there are three of them siblings. Okay? Don't bring confusion into your relationship. Don't bring enmity and don't bring hatred into your relationship. Forgive. Before we do all this, I want you to make that appointment with your counselor, and I want you to set up a DNA test just to clear your mind for you to be sure. But if you can find it in you to not even do that DNA, work with that counselor so that you continue to maintain a healthy, tight family relationship with your wife of 20 years and your three children. Do you understand what I'm saying, Johnson? Okay. So, um, readers, that just you know tells me that there's so much work that we have to do for ourselves. So that's why in this Healing Heart channel, we really break up the issues, we decipher, and we begin to look at the loose ends and try to tie them all together, okay? So I told you that I had some tips. This is a good time to just not read letters, but to give you tips on how to maintain your relationship. What do you think about that? We'll talk about those tips in a minute, right after our break. Have you been told that you are not qualified to own a home simply because of your credit? Or have you been deprived of owning your own commercial center? It's easy somehow. All you need to do is ask RIM. RIM, real estate professionals, will guide you from the beginning to the close of the deal. We do private and commercials. 9898 Business Street, Suit 430M, Houston, Texas, 77036. Call now at 713-922-2968 or visit us at www.repro.com. Email Sunny Ibrahim, 2000 at Yale. Com. Rim, real estate professionals. Get Naira in Nigeria or get dollars in US. We also make it easy to get your phone available to purchase your desired home here in USA. Try us today. Rim, real estate professionals. We are here to help. Well, hello everyone. We are back from our break and I was telling you before that I had five simple 
tips that can help you put a spark back in your relationship. You know what I mean? A spark, okay? So, you know, things happen. You, you, could, you Maybe you've been in that relationship for 20 years, like the last person that, you know, last question that we just tackled. And things are beginning to happen. You're beginning to see double. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sometimes it happens. After you've been with the same person for so long, you just begin to imagine things and you want some excitement and he's so boring. He still puts his socks, you know, just anywhere. He still leaves plates in the sink for you to uh, do the dishes. And um, you, you know what I'm talking about, ladies, right? <laughs> and you are just bored of this relationship. But you need to put a spark. Okay, so let's talk about these five things. Number one, Dr. NJ says, show affection privately and publicly. <laughs> what do I mean? Okay, so let's just say he comes to pick you up from work as he has been doing for the last 15 years. All right, instead of him coming and just, you know, he's in the car. And he, he just nods when you're coming down the staircase. How about, hi, honey, Mwah! and you just kiss him. All right, how about that? Wouldn't that be so nice? And your coworkers are like, ooh, they still got some, some things going on, this old couple, right? But, you know, those things really help. Huh? How about when you are taking that evening a stroll and he holds your hand? When I see couples, you know, just holding hands, it, it, it's so beautiful. It just exudes some confidence, right? And, and, you know, you just say, this is my friend. Do you all remember how you used to hold your kid's hands back in the days? When he holds your hands, he is showing protection. He is showing strength. He is saying to the world, she is mine. And then when you clap your hands right on his, you are also saying, I know you got me. That does something. I'm telling you, try that, okay? How about, you know, when um, he comes uh, to pick you up from uh, the grocery store because he had dropped you, and now he comes back after going to the gas station, how about you just give him a nice hug? How about that, okay? He just dropped you off. But guess what? It's like you missed him so much. Right? That is so nice, folks. Why don't we just try that, okay? Give her, for you guys, just give her a kiss on the lips, okay? Hold her hands, hug her. And while, she, while you're dropping off in the grocery store and she's going and she turns around, Give her a wide smile that says, I got you, babe. <laughs> That's one tip. All right. So let me just give you a second. We have five. I don't know if we have time, but number two. All right. You want to use words like babe, honey. Okay. Words that are hot and exciting when you address her. Maybe you're talking to, um, you know, your friend from work and you're talking about your wife and you just say, you know, my babe does this and that. My darling does this and that, you know, instead of just saying, oh, Rebecca, that or Rebecca, that. Oh, and when you see her and then you say, honey, I miss you. I'm telling you, those are so nice. Use those words. You are hot. Ooh, baby, I like that hairstyle. It makes you hot. You know what that does? Do you really? When you tell her that, I'm telling you, she's going to giggle like a little girl. She's going to say, wow, I still got it. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay? And I'm going to give you tip number three. And this is for you ladies. I want you to do this. Change up your bedroom. Rearrange your bedroom. There's something about just, you know, he comes home and now the headboard is directly facing the window so that when the sunlight hits in the morning and you just roll over on that Saturday morning, ooh, 
there's something that does, okay? Just don't, you know, just, just be excited. You can also change up your living room. Every two, three months, you surprise him. You move stuff around, okay? And he's always going to be eager to find out what you've done this month or next month to the house, right? Those are nice. Those are things that will just put a spark because it's not just monotone. You know what I mean? It's not just yes, no. It's about who knows what's next. <laughs> okay, and tip number four. Have you thought about writing him a love letter? How about you? Have you thought about writing her a love letter? You know, you could write a nice letter, drop it off in the mail. And three or four days later, when the mail comes and she's like, ooh, this postcard, where's that from? She opens it up and it's from you. Oh my God, do you know the smile that you've just put on her face? Do you know how excited she's going to be? Let me tell you something. She's going to put that card to show her girlfriends. Look what my husband did. Isn't he romantic? <laughs> you want to do those things for him, and he should also do the same for you. Those are nice things, okay? Number five. I'm going to give you number five, and we're going to come to the end of this episode. But I will have five more tips next time that we meet because I, I want to do this. We'll, you know, just tackle your letters, and then I'll give you some tips on how to put that spark in your relationship for this month, okay? And then subsequently, we'll just, you know, put things. I'm talking about rearranging stuff, putting a spark. We want to do the same for the show because I want to teach you all how to make your relationships exciting. So number five, number five, schedule a date. Do you know what I mean? Call up that restaurant and just schedule a date. Tell them there's going to be a party of two for next Saturday at 7 p.m. And then you let him know. He's wondering, it's not my birthday, but where are we going? It's just a date. It's just a date, you and him. You don't have to dress up, but you want to look nice, okay? Let him know, honey, we have a date. We're going out on Saturday. It's not your usual, you know, um, dinner night. It's not a birthday. It's not one of the kids' uh, anniversary. It's not your anniversary. It's none of that. It's just a date, a nice restaurant, a wine bar, to go listen to music, some nice jazz music, or whatever you like, you know, that both of you like, you want to just schedule a date just for that, all right? You know what I'm saying? So we're going to be doing this. Um, we're coming to the end. This is the end of this episode, and um, we will have more tips for you next week. Well, hello. That was a very nice show we had today with you all. Thank you so much for, you know, just being with us. Especially, I want to thank our sponsors, Sunny, Ibrahim, Uzo, and company. We want to say a big thank you. And we also want to say thank you to Blue Commerce LLC. You all are just so gracious. We thank you for sponsoring us. We thank you for being with us. And guests, folks, we just love you. Dr. NJ loves you. Remember to send those questions to me at njigirl at hotmail.com. And uh, I will see you next time. Ta-ta! Thank you.